In this video, we talk about the basic stuff of the time series regression and forecasting models. So basically, we'll cover five things. The first is some terminology in time series econometrics. Second is the AR model. Third, we'll talk about the ADL models. And lastly, we'll talk about the information criteria and the stationarity concept. So let's get started. First is some terminologies. Well, we have covered the cross-sectional data and panel data. So cross-sectional data is the entit n entities and one period case. And for the panel data, they are n entities for t periods. Lastly, we are going to talk about the time series. Time series econometrics is focusing on one entity with t periods. Well, you may, you may think that the time series just cover one entity, so it should, should be easier than the panel data. Since panel data cover n, uh, n entities, but the answer is no, because in time series, if you focus on one entity, so you can go into deep. So time series requires lots much more analysis. Okay, so first let's talk about some terminologies. The first one is the lag. So in the time series, we usually focus on whether the past history can explain the future, can forecast the futures. So you need to know some concept called first lag, second lag, or up to J lag. Okay. So first lag just means that the value at one pre one period before, while J lag is the value with P periods before. Okay, so these are the talking about the past. How about the futures? So future we will denote denote as y t plus one or y t plus two, so on and so forth. Well, second terminology is the first difference. First difference means that the change in the value of y with last period y t minus y t minus one. Okay. So the first difference is the change in the value in one period before. Finally, it's a growth rate. For growth rate, so the percentage change in the y t is equal to y t minus y t minus one divided by y t minus one. And we we are in econometrics we all, we usually make use of the log concept. So this is slightly similar to. 100 times change in log yt. Okay, so we have already covered this concept in the nonlinear regressions. So, after talking about this concept, let's go to the special jargon in time series econometrics. It's called the autocorrelations. So, the concept of autocorrelation is that so, correlation is the rela relation between two variables. For autocorrelation, we are go we are going to take a look of the relation between one variable, but in different time period. For example, this row J. Say this is equal to correlation between the value of Y. At time period T and T minus J, okay. So the definition of correlation is the covariance derived by the standard deviation of each variable. So this is equal to covariance of yt and yt minus j derived by the variance of yt times variance of yt minus j and take the square root. So you can estimate the uh, autocorrelation by autocorrelation hat. So this, so you can estimate the covariance y t and y t minus j, and derived by the variance of y t. Okay, so here, we assume that the variance of y t equal the variance of y t minus j. So this is uh, one of the basic assumptions in the time series model, and we say that the variance of the value at different time are equal, and we call this stationary where we will cover the concept of stationary at later stage 
Okay, so most of the econometric time series model has the assumption that the they are stationary. The data are stationary. That means the value of different periods are the same. The distribution are the same. Okay. So what's the meaning of correlation here? Auto correlation means that okay, if this is positive, that means past value. Increase in past value will lead to increase is associated with the increase in the present value. So if it is negative, that means decrease in past value is associated associated with the increase in the present value. Okay. So let's take a look of some examples. So these are the auto correlation table. So usually the inflation rate. The auto correlation of the inflation rate with lag one is 0 0.84, 0 0.67, 0 0.67, and 0 0.6767. So these are some uh, classical data in the econometrics. So this positive value means that okay, past one quarter of inflation rate is associated with present quarter of the inflation rate with positively relation. Okay. So increase in past quarter inflation rate is associated with increase in the present inflation rate. Okay, so these are the interpretation of auto correlations. So next we'll go to the model of the time series econometrics. So one of the classical models is the auto regress regressions models. So in short, AR model. So we have. Uh, various type of AR model. So just like regression model, we have we have simple and we have nonlinear and we have multiple. And AR model, we have we also have lots of the uh, variation. The first one is the AR one model. AR one model means that the yt is a function of yt minus one. Okay, AR one at period one. That means the present value is a function of last period value. Okay. So there are some so some example maybe the change in inflation is equal to some value minus some value of beta one times change in the inflation at t minus one. Okay, so this shows that last period inflation is associated with decrease. So increase in last period inflation is associated associated with with. with decrease in the present inflation rate okay so why we have to learn the time series model because you want to do some forecasting so we are going to forecast the future value say t plus 1 so this t plus 1 the vertical stroke t that means given the given the information at time t what is the forecast value of t plus 1? Since this is a forecast, so we need to put a hat here to stand for the estimate. So this is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 yt. Okay, again, these two betas are for the future value, so we estimate. While yt, so uh, it is given at time t, okay, so th it is known in time t. So you use the time t data multiply the coefficient beta 1 hat and plus some intercept constant then you can forecast the future value so of course no one can forecast the future correctly you have some forecast error forecast error is the yt minus 1 the true value minus the estimated value okay so after one year it realized you get the true value minus your estimated value and you know what is the forecast error so we have some uh, way to calculate the, how large is the error and we will use the concept called the root mean square forecast error. So in short, RMSFE. So this is equal to the expected value of the yt plus 1 minus the y t plus 1 given time t square okay so these are some uh, similar concept for the variance okay 
actually these are the variance of the forecast error given the time t okay so this is the ar1 model well in regression we have simple regression we have multiple regressions so in ar model we have ar1 and also we have ar2 ar3 up to alp okay alp can be any value maybe 100 okay so alp model stand for yt is equal to beta zero plus beta one the last period time plus beta two the second last period then plus up to beta p the period p, the p periods before the time t plus the error term again you can use the a the past p val p periods values to forecast the futures so if you want to do the forecast okay forecast the future given time t this is beta zero hat plus beta one hat yt should we add a hat here no because at time t the value of yt is already realized okay so this becomes some constant plus beta two again yt minus one we know the value already then plus up to beta p yt minus p plus one okay so these are the forecasts of the period of t plus one then the error is the actual value minus this value okay so what is the implication of this alp model so if we if we use the entire history okay if the periods of p is equal to the entire history for example you want to estimate the gdp of a country you get the data of the of the all the history of that country's gdp and if you can do that, okay, use, use the, using the in, entire history, you can generate the smallest RMSFE for the YT plus one. So that means if you can, if you have all the data, you take, take, you take all the data for in the con considerations, then you will get the smallest root mean square for, forecast error. Second, you can make sure that the errors are serially uncorrelated <laughs> okay so this is another important assumption in time series econometrics so i'm going to prove these two for the first one you will get the smallest root mean square forecast error so the formula of the this yt minus yt given t minus one okay so if you want to forecast the time t you you need all the information at t minus one given so you are given all the history information in the history okay all that all the data in the history so this is equal to variance of y at time t t given t minus one plus yt given t minus one minus yt given t minus one hit okay well how can, how can i transform this to this you just here minus the average of yt then plus the average of yt then you expand the quadratic equation you will get the variance term plus the remaining term okay so under what condition this this value is minimized so this value will minimize when the second term is equal to zero okay so the second term equal to zero means that you use all the past data to estimate the t so in this case the rmsfe can be minimized so the implication or the second implications the u the error term are serial serially uncorrelated that means the covariance between ut and ut minus one is zero okay <clears throat> so how to prove it ut minus one is equal to yt minus one minus beta zero minus beta one yt minus two minus beta two yt minus three minus up to beta p y t minus p minus one okay so this is just the 
ALP model here and I'm considering the T minus 1 case so this is UT okay so we can see that UT minus 1 is a function of YT minus 1 YT minus 2 dot 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 up to YT minus P minus 1 right so in the in the V question we assume that expected value of U given all the in the independent variables are equal to zero and in time series again we need to as assume EUT given all the independent variables are equal to zero that means E we assume this for all the y is equal to zero therefore expected value of ut given ut minus one is in fact expected value of ut given a function of yt minus one yt minus two okay since the expected value of u given yt is zero given the function of this yt is also zero okay so eu given the y is e equal to zero then the covariance of ut and ut minus one is zero okay then we complete the proof